today on Blind Date. You want this to be forever. That's all. Yeah. Right? He wants this senior moment to last forever. Such charm. It's overwhelming. But he might want to rethink that. It's wet, and this is dirty. My hair is getting ruined from this. Plus, what's your ideal girl? Purity is really important to me. It's unexplored territory. Do you see somebody as contaminated just because they've had sex with somebody? It all begins now. Wow. On Blind Date. Hey, welcome to the party, everybody. I'm Roger Lodge, once again, ready to show you how easy dating really is when you watch from home. Let's get to it. And today, we'll start by setting up Lindsay with Jacob. Lindsay describes herself as funny and sassy, but says she can intimidate some guys. Jacob says he's looking for a princess to be his wife. And he's hoping she's heaven sent. I'm very spiritual on both sides, so I have a noble heritage that I always have to do my best to live up to. I'm a very tactile person, so I love using my hands. I like sensuality, sexuality, but it needs to be subtle. You know, it's something that I, that I discover. I'm a very creative person. Intelligence is important. So if a guy doesn't know how to handle a conversation, it's, it's over. Well, then let's hope Jacob's got the gift of gab. Pressure's on, buddy. See my date. I'm Jacob. Lindsay. Lindsay, Lovely nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Definitely. You definitely. ever been on a blind date before? No. Never. <laughs> Me neither. How about you? It's first time. Yeah. Same. Cool. Let's go. Perfect. Let's do it. Nice. Your tattoo. Does it work? Yeah. It's awesome. Good. You ever been on a tall girl? I have. You have? Absolutely. Are you a thing for tall women? I'm a volleyball player. Uh, have you ever been married? No. I only plan on getting married once. That's good. Yeah. It's a good plan. Well, how about um, your um, spiritual background? Like, um, I was raised Catholic. I am so not Catholic now. <laughs> <laughs> My pet peeve is fundamentalism, basically, to say yeah. this is the way it is, and you know, everybody else who doesn't think, you know, yeah, what that, I think. That's never good. That's what has terrorism and all that. Yeah, oh, I agree. It's, Different well, I groups, think but. in a certain respect, there's the essence of a lot of religions that have that whole attitude, but it's just the people that interpret the religions that say, you have to convert everybody in the universe to us, or you're, they're your enemy, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, I take a totally different approach. To me, it's like, take everything you have that's good, mm -hmm. hold on to it, embrace it. Get rid of the bad stuff, though. I guarantee, you know, you need to get rid of what's bad, but then simply add unto the good that you have good from wherever you find it. And where I find it actually is in, is in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Like I'm actually, I'm Mormon. Wow. That's what I love about yoga is the fact that it, it just like calms you and centers you. Mm -hmm. And you know, this world can be so crazy and hectic. And we'll just breathe. Into the nose, out to the nose. This is my first class. <laughs> so things that always like put me off about Mormonism is just that whole like um, the whole like get everyone into the religion. Like you'd like you, you know, know like people people actually yeah, excel yeah, within the church. Mean. Like the head of Mormon Mormonism is just the person that's got the most people into the church. And oh like, no, that's not true. The whole like salesmanship <laughs> thing, you know. <laughs> that's not true. No. Yeah, there's a lot of little things like that that get misunderstood. So hmm. that's not true. We, we don't go around talking about what we do and mm -hmm. this and that, but one of the goals in our faith, mm -hmm. our humanitarian goal is this, no impure water supply on earth. That's a great goal. I mean, it's an ambitious goal and we're getting there. I mean, there's so many wells that are being dug in Ethiopia and Africa, it's unbelievable. But we don't That's talk amazing. about that, yeah. God is man's servant. Mm -hmm. 
but is is he a servant to man? Right. You know, and it's like and it's like wow, that's true. And yeah. It's kind of like when you're in the service to others, you're really in the service to God. Can I tell you what faith is? What? This is faith. Okay. <laughs> faith is a idea that God exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's another layer. Mm -hmm. Then this then it comes down to this. The highest aspect of faith is uh -huh. an actual knowledge. It's not a hope. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a intellectual understanding. It's an actual knowledge that the path you're on is according to His will, okay. and that's active faith. And that, that's a beautiful thing. I've been on that a couple times, and I, I tell you, it's real. That's amazing. Yeah. I just don't believe it's a he. Could be, yeah. So what are you looking for? What am I looking for yeah, in a relationship? What are you looking for in a woman? In a woman, I think. Um, Do you like women subservient? Uh, no, not really. No, I think um, subservient. That's kind of an interesting word. Well, no, I think um, I think men and women are are equal. <laughs> so What's hard your ideal fun. girl? Purity is really important to me. Purity. Yeah, purity. You know, purity of intention. A lot of people would interpret that as virgin, but I take it that's not what you mean. Um, no, that's exactly what I mean. Virgin? Uh -huh. Really? But do you, do you see somebody as contaminated just because they've had sex with somebody? Um, not necessarily. Okay. No. I have the humility to know that I would not want to be alone with you in an intimate situation because mm -hmm. I could go there. And so that's what I'm talking about. Avoidance is better than resistance. I believe there's a lot of women that I would want to be intimate with. Mm -hmm. But I'm not because I want to save that for um, a higher level of intimacy. Having a woman with you mm. in heaven, that's what I want. And I, I believe, I don't believe in death to your heart. I believe it goes on forever. So I was, that's what I'm looking for. Well, thank you Thanks. for a wonderful evening and a great conversation. Yeah. Good luck finding your princess. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, have a good one. You too. Was that a date or a sermon? I don't think Jacob talked about anything else. Then we'll get their post-date confessions when we come back. Up next. Tell me, darling, do you ever talk about anything other than Arizona? Dating old school. They cut out my stomach in 1998. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about that at the table. That's next. Yeah, you purity. Know, purity of intention. A lot of people would interpret that as virgin, but I take it that's not what you mean. Um, no, that's exactly what I mean. Do you see somebody as contaminated just because they've had sex with somebody? Um, not necessarily. Oh, but I think he does. And it's a big reason these two will never see each other again. Lindsay is not the princess that I'm looking for. I think because she doesn't truly believe that she's a daughter of a heavenly king. He didn't even realize he was trying to convert me the entire time. I had a dream literal dream that I would meet somebody and I kind of halfway thought it might have happened on this date. I think I was really unjustly placed in this less than noble category. I'm really not surprised or shocked that religion became an issue on this date with Lindsay. Um, it, it always is. I do believe that there is a God and tonight she was messing with me by setting me up with Jacob. You know when it's all said and done there'd be no purpose for a second date. I, I think Jacob is really misleading himself if he's thinking he's going to find a princess virgin Mormon in L.A. Maybe I should move to Utah. Actually, that might not be a bad idea, pal. All right, now let's dip into our senior files and meet Patricia and her date, Stanley. Now, this is Patricia's second chance on our show. Her first guy made her feel a tad uneasy. 
Okay, watch the hand so it doesn't go too far down. So you don't want to go out and get drunk with me tonight. The faster you shove it in and pull it out, the quicker you get done. You're such a jokester, Frank. Yeah, I don't know how to quit. He also didn't know how to woo Pat, so according to her today will be Stanley. Now Stan's a good old buckaroo looking for a sweet, honest gal. And he says he has an old secret for attracting the ladies. I spoil the women. I just look for a nice woman. I don't care her appearance or what she looks like. It's all how she treats me. What makes me happy is when I catch a nice fish, then I put it back in the river. I don't keep it. And then when I meet a nice woman, and we have a good life together. Well, Stanley certainly has the wardrobe thing down. Go get him, Tex. <laughs>
good bread like this in Phoenix. Everything is soft. In Arizona, they have a lot of produce. There's a place in Arizona. Tell me, darling, do you ever talk about anything other than Arizona? They cut out my stomach in 1998. Yeah, I'd rather not oh. talk about that at the table. Okay, right. Thank you. Pleasure. You have um, a nice, safe trip home, yeah. and it was a pleasure to Thank meet you. you. All okay. right, you take it easy. I hope everything works out for you. Me too. It will, I'm sure. Yeah. It does open. All, All right. right. Thank pleasure. you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Good night. I thought for sure Stanley had her with the old they cut out my stomach line. That's usually gold. And they'll put this one to bed after this. Coming up. What am I going to do with it? <laughs> Here's looking at you. So what pisses you off? <laughs> that look. The Hall of Shame's coming up. They don't have as good bread like this in Phoenix. In Arizona, they have a lot of produce. Do you ever talk about anything other than Arizona? They cut out my stomach in 19. Yeah, I'd rather not oh. talk about that at the table. Right. Oh, once you've got game, you never lose it. But for some reason, Patty didn't seem to be all that impressed with old Stan the man. Go figure. I just got so tired of listening to him yak, yak, yak about the Arizona. She had no right complaining and, and, and saying all the bad things about all the things that were happening. I don't think that I was complaining as much as I was just being unhappy that um, he wouldn't change the subject. Just keep your mouth shut and do the date. That's it. I didn't really believe it when Stanley told me that he was generous with his lady friends because he seemed to be so frugal with his own lifestyle. I don't have to spend money on myself. I'd rather spend it on her. There won't be a second date with Stanley if I can help it. Not in this lifetime. After watching her and listening how she complained about everything, I, I knew she wasn't the right type of woman for me. Don't worry, Stanley. You'll find the right woman. Hopefully soon. Real soon. All right, coming up, you want to freak out your date? Well, learn from the master next. You are the guy. Get off my stage. Welcome back. Now, I think it's safe to say we've had some unusual fellows on the show. Like Stosh, for instance. With this guy, it's all in the eyes. So what pisses you off? <laughs> that look. <laughs> <laughs> wipe, wipe, wipe it off my face. What's the real story? Which real one? Yeah. About you. The real story is that I know what you're all after. Well, you know, you act like a gentleman, but you're thinking about sex. Is that not right? <laughs> what am I going to do with you? Absolutely just caress you from head to toe. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie. All right. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, boy. That guy was freaking me out. All right, that'll do it for today's show. I'm Roger Lodge. 
I'll see you tomorrow.